Before we start, this report contains some distressing details. From The Australian, a special bonus episode of The Front about week one of the Bruce Lehrman defamation trial. I'm Claire Harvey. Bruce Lehrman has endured a grilling in the witness box on day three of his defamation action against Network 10 and presenter Lisa Wilkinson. The former Liberal staffer was accused of rape by an ex-colleague, Brittany Higgins. Lehrman is suing Network 10 and Wilkinson for publishing her allegations and has always denied any sexual contact occurred at all. In today's episode, I'm joined by legal affairs correspondent Ellie Dudley to discuss the case so far. You'll hear some of the interactions from court. We've used voice actors to bring you the words spoken by Mr. Lehrman, lawyers and the judge. Buying drinks, talking, touching, all the elements of a night out have been slowed down to freeze frame and subjected to excruciatingly detailed examination in the Federal Court of Australia where Bruce Lehrman is suing Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson. 10's barrister, Dr Matthew Collins KC, has challenged Lehrman's claims. CCTV has shown him and Brittany Higgins standing close in a Canberra bar in March 2019, shortly before they went to Parliament House, where Higgins says she was raped on a sofa in the office of Minister Linda Reynolds. Lehrman has always denied any wrongdoing, And under questioning, he said he didn't see her trip over or stumble. He didn't think she was drunk. He didn't tell her to drink more. He didn't hear her say she wanted to go home. He didn't kiss her and he didn't rape her. But he has had to make some admissions about getting some details wrong. Ellie, it started out pretty well for Bruce Lehrman. What were his first moments in the witness box like? So he started in the witness box giving his evidence in chief. He was being questioned by his barristers, Stephen Wybrow and Matthew Richardson, in the witness box. So he's talking about his recollection of events of that night. He's talking about how Channel 10 have been unfair to him in their reporting. He's talking about they didn't give him ample amount of time to respond to their requests. He spoke about his mental health and being admitted to a mental health facility and sort of giving his version of events in a way that helps plead his case, which makes sense considering it's his barristers who are the ones asking him questions. He spoke quite emotionally of his feelings at being unfriended. What did he say had happened to him? Yeah, so he spoke about his experiences after the project interview aired, things like getting kicked out of group chats, uh, watching his friend count on Facebook go down as many, many people unfriended him. He spoke about finding out who his real friends were, was a phrase that he used. And he spoke about the impact that that had on his mental health. He got admitted to a mental health facility on Sydney's North Shore. And interestingly, he said that it was while he was in that mental health facility that he finally saw an email that had come from Network 10 producer Angus Llewellyn asking him for comment on these allegations from Brittany Higgins. He said that was the first time that he had received any communications from Network 10. And then it came to cross-examination, which is, of course, where Network 10 and anyone else's barristers get to grill him on his version of events. Where did Network 10 take it first? He was interrogated over evidence that he gave about what he referred to as a minor security breach when he put a secure ASIO document on the desk of one of his colleagues instead of handing it to them directly. Dr. Collins went to town on Bruce Lerman about this evidence and questioned him over what Dr. Collins perceived to be inconsistencies in what he had said to police and what he had said in earlier evidence. He denied having been disciplined by his minister. What was that all about? So that was in regards to a heated discussion which had occurred after a work dinner in early March 2019. That was a discussion between Bruce Lerman and two other Liberal staffers. That discussion related to Brittany Higgins, who had also been at that dinner. Dr Collins put to Bruce Lerman that after Miss Higgins had left that dinner, Mr Lerman engaged in a conversation with these two Liberal staffers, Nikki Hamer and Jesse Watton. 
Dr. Collins said to Mr. Lerman that Miss Hamer had said to him and Mr. Watton that they shouldn't have been pressuring Miss Higgins to stay for a drink. Dr. Collins also put to Mr. Lerman that him and Mr. Watton had said to Miss Hamer that it wasn't up to her to be offering Miss Higgins a job. Apparently, Miss Hamer had offered Miss Higgins a job throughout the course of that evening. The next day, Dr. Collins said that Mr. Lerman had been disciplined by Senator Reynolds over that discussion. Dr. Collins said that Mr. Lerman had been disciplined. Mr. Lerman said that he hadn't been disciplined. Dr. Collins then said to him, so you don't recall being disciplined by a minister of the Crown? And Mr. Lerman said that, yes, he did not recall that occurring. The cross-examination then went to the night in question in early 2019. Where did Matthew Collins take that line of questioning? So on Friday morning, the court spent a lot of time viewing CCTV footage from the Dock Hotel, which was one of the pubs that Brittany Higgins and Bruce Lerman went before they went back to Parliament House. In the CCTV footage, you can see both Mr Lerman and Miss Higgins interacting with each other and interacting with various other staffers who are present on that evening. What was interesting about this is that previously, Bruce Lerman has said that he did not buy any alcoholic beverages for Brittany Higgins that night. Let's hear that exchange between Barrister Matthew Collins and Bruce Lehrman. We've used voice actors to bring you their words. And you went to her on numerous occasions in the course of the night to converse with her? Not to specifically converse with her. Chatted with her for quite a proportion of the night? I would disagree with that. Kept an eye on her right throughout the evening? I disagree with that. You were monitoring what she was drinking throughout the evening? No. You made sure she always had a drink in her hands or close by? No. You bought her two vodka drinks? Uh, I've... mm, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm sorry. Be very careful about it, Mr Lerman. Did you buy Miss Higgins two vodka drinks in the course of your time at the dock? Oh, at the dock. You said two rounds? I don't believe I bought two rounds, no. I asked two drinks... Did you buy her two vodka drinks? I don't recall buying her two vodkas, no. Mr Wybrow asked you, do you recall buying drinks for anyone other than Austin? You said, I do not. And that was truthful evidence? Um, I'm happy to be corrected. It's very hard to recall specifically. I'm sorry. I'm asking for your evidence, Mr Lerman. It's not my job to correct you. Is the answer you gave for Mr Wybrow truthful or not? Uh, To the best I could recall, yes. So, as you sit here today, your evidence to his honour is you have no recollection of buying two vodka drinks for Miss Higgins at the dock. At this moment, I'm really struggling because I'm in the witness box. I'm being very careful not to give definitive answers because my mind is blank at the moment. Do you need a break? Uh, Not necessarily, no. What was that moment like, Ellie, as you watched the court proceedings unfold? It was pretty tense. Dr Collins did keep pushing Mr Lerman on that point, at which point Justice Michael Lee intervened and said, Mr Lerman, if, if you need to take a break, take a break now. And the court broke up for 15 minutes. So it was quite tense watching this exchange and Mr Lerman was really pushed on his evidence. And when he came back to court after that 15-minute break, he had something important to say. Yes. So before that break, he said that he had not bought any alcohol for Miss Higgins. By the time he came back, he said that he had recalled that he had bought alcohol for Miss Higgins. That answer was false? Yes, and I apologise. I was wrong. So the answer you gave to his honour on the 22nd when you said you did not recall buying any drinks for anyone other than Austin, that answer was false. Yes. Because the true position is that you bought at least two drinks for Miss Higgins on the 22nd of March. Being able to take a short break, I have reflected, and I recall going up to the bar with Miss Higgins, yes. Did you speak to anyone during the break, Mr Lerman? No. It's more that just you had time to sit and reflect on the questions I've asked you? Yes. Yes, and you recollected during the break to do that you had bought one drink for Miss Higgins at the dock? Yes. I'm suggesting to you that you, in fact, bought two drinks. What do you say? During the break, the best I could recall was one. And are you able to explain why you answered the question from Mr Wybrow on the 22nd, 
Do you recall buying any drinks for anyone other than Austin? You said, I do not. Sorry, I can't. I must have been confused about where, where, where were we? Were you confused about the question Mr Wybrow asked you? Oh, I can't think back to yesterday. I'm sorry. It's quite stressful. The other thing that was brought into question was how much money Bruce Lemon spent that night. He said that at the dock he only spent $16 and said that he only had two credit cards with him that night, one credit card and one FPOS card. But in the CCTV footage, you can see him buying drinks for Miss Higgins that would have cost more than $16. In one of the snippets of CCTV footage, you can see him buy two beers and one spirit. And as we know, you know, a a popular Canberra pub on a Friday night, it's pretty unlikely you're going to get three drinks for $16. So at that point, Dr. Collins basically put to him, you must have had a third credit card. You must have had a secret credit card, to which Bruce Lerman denied that. Coming up, what all this means for Bruce Lemon's case. So, Ellie, you've now watched quite a lot of the CCTV footage from that bar of that night. How would you describe the interactions between Bruce Lemon and Brittany Higgins? So earlier this week, Bruce Lerman said that his interactions with Miss Higgins were both professional and minimal. I think what Dr. Collins is getting at is that they were neither of those things. Dr. Collins keeps saying quotes that Miss Higgins and Mr. Lerman were saying to each other that night. Things like Lerman encouraging Miss Higgins to drink alcohol, saying to her things like, drink it all now, drink it all now, you can't leave that, come on, you're not leaving that. Let's hear another exchange voiced by actors between Bruce Lehrman and Matthew Collins KC. The words you said to her referring to the drinks you've just amassed on the table were all hers, all hers. I disagree with that. Dispute it or you deny it? I don't know. I don't recall ever saying that, Dr Collins. I'm putting it to you squarely. The words you said to Miss Gain having just amassed three drinks immediately in front of Miss Higgins, was all hers, all hers, in relation to the three spirit-based drinks. And I'm disagreeing with you. I'll play it one more time. And I'll ask you whether you adhere to that answer. Having observed it again, you're saying words to Miss Gain as you gestured towards the three drinks. I agree, I was talking to Ms Gain. You said to her, all hers, all hers, suggesting the three drinks belong to Miss Higgins. I've said I disagree with you. And we then saw Miss Higgins smile and pat you on the arm. Oh, sorry, I must have missed that. I'm happy to play it again. Go back 15 seconds. You saw Miss Higgins then smile and pat you on the arm. Yes. The words she said to you were, oh, stop, oh, stop. Oh, I can't be certain about that. Sorry. Can I put this to you, Mr Lerman? You are encouraging Miss Higgins to get drunk. No. So it's really interesting having heard Lerman's evidence in chief in which he said, you know, our interactions were minimal, they were professional, and then hearing things like, him apparently saying to her, drink it all now, and then seeing on video Higgins sculling a drink. Yes, there's a moment where he seems to be pushing some small glasses with clear liquid in them towards her as she stands by the edge of a table. There's another image where she's holding a beer while he stands very close to her. The words that they're alleged to have spoken, this is coming from a lip reader that Network 10 has engaged. Is that right? So we don't quite know yet. They haven't said that explicitly, but we do know that there's been discussions in court about Network 10 engaging a lip reader to determine what Mr Lerman and Miss Higgins were saying to each other at the pub. Now, obviously, when you've got Dr Collins saying, 
Mr. Lerman, you're saying this, you have to assume that it's come from this leap reader. Of course, none of this proves whether or not Bruce Lerman raped Brittany Higgins. He has continually and vehemently denied that that happened. And of course, that's why he's taking this legal action, because he says Network 10 defamed him by publishing an allegation that was false. How do you think his demeanour has gone as he's gone through first his evidence in chief and now his cross-examination? He appears to be crumbling at this stage. Obviously, the things that they're talking about aren't, they aren't the crux of the issue, right? We haven't gotten to the couch. We haven't gotten to the ministerial suite yet. We're just at the pub beforehand. So while it seems like tiny bits of evidence about whether or not he bought Miss Higgins alcohol or not, it's painting a picture of somebody who has inconsistencies in his evidence. And what Network 10 seem to be attempting to do is proving that if he's lied about these things, what else has he lied about? Eventually, the cross-examination did get to the couch and the ministerial suite. And Lehrman held firm, denying that he'd raped Brittany Higgins or that any sexual contact took place at all. The cross-examination was adjourned until Monday. Ellie Dudley is The Australian's legal affairs correspondent. The case continues and you can read all Ellie and Stephen Rice's coverage right now at theaustralian.com.au.